Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment of Health Professional Radio. We'll be speaking with Dr. Kim Chi this evening, Senior Research Scientist, Vancouver Prostate Center. He's joining us to discuss his presentation at ESMO 2023 concerning a three-year update and final analysis of magnitude. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Kim Chi. Thank you so much for taking the time this evening. Thank you, Neil, for having me on your show. Vancouver Prostate Center. Give us a bit of professional background, if you would, and briefly explain what brought you to this particular specialty. So uh, I'm a medical oncologist. Uh, I have been for about 25 years now. And my focus in my clinical as well as research work is prostate cancer. Uh, In fact, uh, all my uh, clinical work is actually focused on men with advanced prostate cancer. Um, And I work both at the uh, BC Cancer Vancouver Cancer Center as well as the Vancouver Prostate Center in Vancouver, Canada. Provide us a brief summary of the magnitude data that you presented at ESMO, including any background information that's relevant. Sure, happy to do that. So I presented the final results, the final overall survival results of the magnitude study. Now, the magnitude study is a phase three randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial. And the background to this is that patients with metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer often carry genetic defects and homologous recombination repair genes, especially BRCA1 and BRCA2. And these are associated with poor outcomes. In the magnitude study that uh, that we first reported on the results, uh, it investigates the combination of a PARP inhibitor called norepirib with abiraterone acetate and prednisone as first-line therapy in this patient population. Abiraterone and prednisone is a common first-line therapy, so it's really testing the, the combination of norepid with an abiraterone. The magnitude study enrolled the largest cohort of patients with BRCA1 and 2 mutated cancers in a phase 3 study, enrolling 225 such patients. Now, we know patients with BRCA alterations do benefit from PARP inhibitors when they're given as a single agent after AR pathway inhibitors like abiraterone. Uh, in this study, though, what we're looking at is bringing it earlier in the disease in combination as first-line therapy. In the primary analysis that we did, magnitude demonstrated an improved radiographic progression-free survival with the combination compared with placebo plus abiraterone. In patients with BRCA mutations, the hazard ratio is 0.53, uh, very statistically significant p-value 0.001. That is indicating a 47% reduction in the risk of progression or death in this patient population. What we're presenting at ESMO, what we presented at ESMO was the final pre-planned event-driven overall survival analysis, now with about 36 months of uh, follow-up. Give us an example of a precision therapy and tell us uh, why precision therapies are important to research for patients with these uh, gene alterations that you spoke of. Yeah, so I think more and more as cancer treatment has evolved, we really evolved towards that precision therapy attitude. And really, it encompasses both things, giving uh, the right patient uh, the right treatment at the right time. Um, and so uh, instead of giving, uh, we want to make sure that the patients that are going to benefit the most from a particular treatment are going to receive that treatment. And really, that precision medicine age has entered into prostate cancer. Number one, it's recommended by most clinical groups as well as uh, health systems that patients with metastatic prostate cancer should undergo both uh, tissue and germline testing for these genomic alterations. The reason being is, number one, it has treatment implications, like I just talked about. Patients with BRCA alterations and other alterations may be eligible for parkinson's inhibitors as well as other treatments. Number two, it's prognostic. We know that patients with cancers that have these genomic alterations have much worse outcomes. Uh, In the case of BRCA alterations, these patients do twice as worse. And then thirdly, it has hereditary cancer implications. Half these alterations are germline in origin, meaning they can have passed it down to their uh, sons and daughters. Uh, And these genes, particularly BRCA, for example, uh, they are high penetrating streams, meaning that um, if you have a BRCA mutation in your germline, your risk of getting cancer is very, very high. And this includes breast cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancers, 
pancreatic cancers and others. So there, it really is important that we are doing this genomic testing for patients now to advance the precision medicine cause. You mentioned the type of research that was involved with magnitude. Expand on the methods that were used to conduct this research, if you would. Magnitude was a, a phase three trial, and patients were eligible if they were uh, had not received prior therapy for metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer, although they could have had some uh, up to four months of treatment with abiraterone. This was allowed so that we could do this pre-screening genomic testing. Um, they could also have had prior therapy for castration-sensitive disease or, or non-metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer. Now, they were pre-screening the patients for uh, the homologous recombination repair gene alterations like BRCA, and then they were put into two cohorts, uh, a biomarker-positive cohort, those that had these gene alterations, and a biomarker-negative cohort, those that did not have an identified gene alteration. Uh, and what we found initially is that in the biomarker negative cohort, there was no benefit for the combination therapy. So this uh, part of the study was closed off and patients uh, were not further accrued and they were uh, unblinded and taken off the study. For the patients that had um, uh, a genomic alteration that were biomarker positive, they were subsequently randomized from rapid and abiraterone versus placebo plus abiraterone. And as I mentioned, at the first interim analysis, there was, um, the primary endpoint was uh, met with, uh, uh, in terms of benefit for radiographic progression free survival. And so what we reported at ESMO were the secondary endpoints after um, more prolonged follow-up for overall survival, time to symptomatic progression, time to cytotoxic chemotherapy, as well as looking at safety um, uh, long-term. Talk about the significance of the research as it relates to patients in the future. Well, what we found is that overall survival favored neraparib and abiraterone over placebo plus abiraterone in patients with BRCA mutations. Um, hazard ratio of 0.788. Importantly, we also did a multivariate analysis showing that hazard ratio is 0.663 when we account for um, uh, differences in baseline factors, meaning, again, a 34% reduction in the risk of death. So that was the final analysis for overall survival, meaning there is a benefit to these agents. This is despite that patients did cross over to receive PARP inhibitors after. So despite that subsequent therapy, um, uh, there was a benefit for this earlier treatment. There was also benefits in terms of time to symptomatic progression, uh, delaying time to uh, cytotoxic chemotherapy. And the side effects were generally well tolerated um, with the known side effects of PARP inhibitors, predominantly hematologic toxicity with anemia. So overall, the, the benefit risk profile of first-line neuropathy and abiraterone assay really favors combination therapy for patients with BRCA mutation and really emphasizes the need for testing patients early on to see if these have these alterations so that they can benefit from these kinds of treatments. Dr. Chi, I appreciate your uh, time this evening. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Kim Chi. Audio copies of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au, also at Anchor Spotify, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.